Welcome, welders, to episode number 71 of Adventures in Welding. Adventures in Welding is brought to you by our friends at Eastwood. Check them out for all of your welding needs. Now, today what we're going to be talking about is a common material that you're going to work with if you do any home or garage fabricating. And what I'm talking about is plain steel, one-inch square pipe. This has got a... Uh, 80 thousandths uh, wall thickness. This is pretty standard stuff you can pick up at any big box store or steel yard and you can build a lot of stuff out of that. And we're going to look at a couple of different joints with it today that are very common things that you would be using. So what I've done is I've taken some pieces and I've got some cut at a 45 degree angle and I've also got one cut at just a 90. And I think what we'll do is we're going to put ourselves together a little joint. Something like this. And what we're going to work on is keeping everything square. Getting nice looking welds. Using the Eastwood TIG 200. With the number 17 torch. I've got a 2% lanthanated tungsten in there. And we'll be using... 1 16th inch ER 70 S2 filler metal. So let's get everything tacked up and we'll take a look at how its process is going to go. All right, folks, as you can see, I have the joint set here and ready to go. I use a uh, cold cutting saw blade to cut this nice 45 degree miter. You can see that's pretty flush there, and when we flip it over, you'll be able to see it's pretty flush on the bottom. I've just used a couple of simple clamps to clamp it down here. Now we've got our Eastwood TIG 200 ACDC. It's going to be set on the foot pedal for our power control, so we don't have to set anything here. We're in DC, so there's no clearance effect. I've got a 0.4 second pre-flow set and a nice 6 second post-flow. I've got the foot pedal hooked up. I've got the torch secured in the torch connection and the work lead secured here. And what's really nice about this machine is if you have any questions about your settings, Eastwood has provided you with a nice chart right here on top. Flip her on. We've got our gas on, our argon on. Then you just want to make sure you purge out the system before your first weld so that there is argon. Now one of the nice things about having a really tight fit up like this is that we can do a whole fusion weld. So let's give it a try for this side where our fit up's nice and tight. We're not going to use any filler. It's going to melt that material together. Hold it there until our gas comes out. Like we got one place it didn't take so well. Let's hit it again. Might have to put a little filler in it. Thank you. 
All right, that side came out really well. Now, unfortunately, we can't do that to the other side. We're going to have to use filler and weld on this side. Now, I'm still going to keep these pieces clamped down. And the reason for that is we want to keep this as square as possible. All right, here we run into an interesting question, this outside corner. Now I could fusion weld it together. I could use a filler metal, but that's a pretty sharp angle. And there's really not going to be much there for me to get that weld metal to bite into. So I think in this case, our best bet is just going to be to hit this with a grinder or a file and get some room to get some metal in there. So that's what we're going to All do. Right, now you can see I hit that with a grinder and smooth that corner out real nice. So what we can do now is get in there and get a nice solid weld going. Before we go any further, put this field square on there. And we're still looking pretty square, leaving us with the last part of this joint to deal with, which is the trickiest, and that will be this inside corner. It's really not that hard, but as far as all the joints are done today, this is the trickiest one. So let's get in there and get her welded out. Make sure you get right up to the edge, add a little extra filler material, and we just taper off real nice like that. And now before we put our vertical upright piece on, or our, our vertical piece on in this direction, we're going to need to dress this up here a little bit so it's nice and smooth and flat. All right, don't worry, folks. You didn't miss anything. The only thing I did was clean up this here with the grinder, and I stuck our vertical piece on top here, and I'm just using a magnet to align it. Now we're going to get some tacks on there using our flash tack method. 
But first, I'm going to need to grind that down a little bit. All right, nice and clean. We don't want to mess around with any dirty tungsten. So we're going to start with this first tack right here. And we're going to use the flash tack method. Same thing for this side. You've got a space. And that's just from the built-in way that the, um, the square tubing is made with the rounded corners. So in order to pack this one, we'll just use a little piece of filler. Kind of hard for me to tell I'm going around backwards here. Hard for me to tell if I'm getting it or not. So all we have to do now is weld this baby out. Let's get to it. You want to be quick when spinning this around. It's a little warm. So I hit it up with the sanding disc just a little bit to clean her up, make her look nice. Not much you could do about those inside fillet welds except just hit them a little bit. But if you can, you can put the square on there, hopefully you guys can see that we came out nice and square cornered there. Too bad at all there. And where are we at? Not too bad. Where the heck, where the heck about? Not too bad there. A little tough to get in there with the fillet weld. But that space there is looking pretty even. So all in all, that's a successful little weld. 
So folks, that's it for this episode of Adventures in Welding. Thanks for joining me, and thanks to our friends at Eastwood for providing such quality equipment. Check them out for all of your welding needs, and I'll see you again next time.